Next, we'll look at a basis for the polynomials. So before we consider the basis for the polynomials, let's think about what it means to be linearly independent. So for example, here are three polynomials. And these are not linearly independent. In particular, I can write P3 as 7P2 minus 3P1. So basically, it means the exact same thing. Can I write them, can I write one as a linear combination of the others? So the standard basis for the polynomial P3 is 1t, t squared, t cubed, which means P3 is dimension 4. So in general, for Pn, we have a basis of 1, t, t squared, t cubed, t to the fourth, etc., all the way up to t to the n. Since every number from 1 to n will appear as an exponent, plus you have to include this 1, Pn will always be dimension n plus 1. So the first four Ligure polynomials are given here. So these are just special polynomials, they have a name. In particular, they solve a differential equation. We want to show that these polynomials form a basis. So I need to show that they're linearly independent and that they span. So we can do that by actually putting these polynomials into a matrix. Every single vector will have a column, just like before. In the rows, we'll represent the basis elements. So the first row will be a 1, the second will be t, the third will, the sec, the third will be t squared, and the fourth will be t cubed. So for example, my first polynomial is 1. So that's 1 plus 0t plus 0t squared plus 0t cubed. The second one is 1 minus 1t plus 0t squared plus 0t cubed. The third is 2 minus 4t minus 1t squared plus 0t cubed. And then finally, 6 minus 18t plus 9t minus 1t cubed. So now we can see we have a pivot in every single column, which tells me that there are no free variables, so these things are linearly independent. And in addition, there's no row of zeros, which means they also span. So these now form a basis. Now I'll consider a basis for the matrix space. So here I'm only going to discuss the standard basis. And if I want to find the standard basis for m2 by 2, then we have these four vectors. Basically, I take the 1 and move it to each entry. And in general, that's how we'll find these. So for instance, 2 by 3, so 2 rows and 3 columns, would be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The next one would be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. The third, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And you can continue. So in general, to find the dimension, we're just going to multiply these two numbers, 2 times 3. So the dimension of this one is 6. The dimension of the 2 by 2 space would be 4. And in general, we won't deal with these that much, but I did want to give you an idea of what the standard basis is. So now we'll talk about the basis for the function space. So first off, it's important to note that this does have an infinite basis because we cannot get a finite set of functions that span every single function. So we do have an infinite space when it comes to spanning. However, we can talk about linear independence. And we do this using the Ronskian. So basically, I'm going to form a square matrix. I'm going to put the functions on the first row, the derivatives on the second, second derivatives on the third, third derivatives on the fourth, etc. And you'll keep going and taking as many derivatives as you need to until you have a square matrix. From there, we just take the determinant. And as long as at any point this determinant is not zero, the functions will be independent. 
So I want to show that sine and cosine are linearly independent. So to do the Ronskian, I start by putting sine and cosine on the top row. We only need a 2 by 2 matrix here, so we'll only take the first derivatives. The derivative of sine is cosine, and the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And now we'll take the determinant. Sine x times negative sine x is negative sine squared minus cosine times cosine is cosine squared. And this is negative 1, which is not 0. So these, we can say, are linearly independent. For my last example, I want to use the Ronskian to show that 1x and x squared are linearly independent. So it's important to note that these are polynomials, and in fact this is the basis for P2. So we do know that they're linearly independent using other methods, but I specifically want to use the Ronskian here. So I'll put my functions on the first row. The second row will be their derivatives. The derivative of 1 is 0, derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 0 is 0, derivative of 1 is 0, and the derivative of 2x is 2. So now let's find the determinant. I would suggest going down the first column since most everything is going to be zeros, and we only have to deal with this 1. That leaves us with 1, 2x, 0, and 2. Taking this determinant gives me 2 minus 0, which is 2, which is not 0. So these are also linearly independent. And while in both of my examples I got numbers at the end of the determinant, I could get a function. And basically as long as you get something that's not 0 everywhere, they will be linearly independent. For instance, if I take this Ronskian and I get an answer like x, well, that's not always 0. I could stick in x equal to 5 and that new function would no longer be 0. So those would be independent. So as long as it's not 0 everywhere, you will have linear independence.